This video is going to be about marginal densities, marginal density functions. This is a direct follow-up from joint density functions, since marginal density functions are defined relative to joint density functions. So we'll start with that definition. Then we'll look at two examples. And then I'll leave you with two practice problems so that you can get some um, extra practice with these concepts. So we'll just go quickly to a definition. A marginal density is a density function found by summing or integrating over, let's rewrite the word over, because that, even I can hardly read that, over just, but I'll put that in parentheses because theoretically um, this could happen iteratively from higher dimensions, but for uh, our sake, we're only focusing on two dimensions, so you're only going to really focus on just one at a time. Anyway, summing or integrating over one variable of a joint density. So that is essentially like starting with a joint density function and then doing some magic that is summing or integrating to get either g of x, a density function that we will now call g to differentiate it from f, or h of y. And so the idea is you summed over y in order to get g of x, or you could similarly integrate over x to get h of y. Now, whether you integrate or sum is not really um, defined here. It really just comes down to what type of distribution the joint density function is, whether it's continuous or discrete. So if it's continuous, then both of these are going to be integration. Or if it's discrete, then both of these processes are going to be summation. So let's look at some examples so we can highlight this a little bit better. So we'll start with um, uniform on the four points defined by the Cartesian product of the set that consists of just the points 1 and 2. So we have a density function, x, y, that is just equal to 0.25. Okay, so if you want to define g of x, then what you need to do is, and this is how they write it, sum up across y the joint density function. And now here, the sum notation gets a little sloppy in the world of statistics. All they're trying to say is sum over the support for just the variable y. And what you'll be left with is a function in x. Now, in order to better interpret this rather sloppy notation, what we need to remember is that the joint density function is equal to 1 quarter for the following four points. So really what we're saying is, look, if we have a plot that looks like this, and on this vertical axis is the density itself. And here is x, and here is y. What we're essentially going to do is project, is the word, across the y 
values onto the x-axis, and we will sum up, because this is a discrete distribution, these arrows are going to indicate summations across the values 1 and 2 for the value x equals to 1. And we're going to sum up across the values y equals to 1 and 2 for the value x equals to 2. So this is probably better represented as a piecewise function that ends up with two different values of this marginal density x that takes the place of adding up the two density functions, that is, consider the point x is equal to 1, and add up 0.25 here and 0.25 here. So this is really just 1 half at the value x is equal to 1. And similarly, for x is equal to 2, you're going to add up the points um, f of x comma 1, oops, this one, plus f of x comma 2. But this time when you do it, these points here are to represent the values along x is equal to 2. So once you project here onto the y-axis, what you get is this new distribution across x that we will name g, and now it just takes on the values 1 half. So it's like we get a new uniform distribution across x for the values 1 and 2. And the points just have the density equal to 1 half. OK. Let's try a continuous example. So take f of xy equal to 2 times x plus y for 0 less than x less than or equal to y less than or equal to 1. So we're going to do a similar sort of thing. We're going to project onto a specific axis. So if we want to define the marginal density of y, then we're going to integrate the joint density with respect to x. We're going to get rid of the x variable by projecting onto the y-axis. So in this case, the bounds for x go from 0 to y. And in one sense, that's kind of obvious if you write out the sample space this way. In another sense, that's kind of obvious because once you plug in values for y, for x, values y for x, after you do this integration problem with respect to x, you will end up with a function of just y variables. So we've done most of this uh, integral before, so I'm just going to cruise through it. OK, so we end up with the density function. 3y squared, and the new um, sample space in terms of y is as if you just got rid of x. So this is 0, less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 1. You can indeed now check that h of y is a density function. 1, it is non-negative numbers. 3y squared for y from 0 to 1 gives us non-negative numbers. Check. 2 does it integrate to 1? Well, that's just essentially 3y squared dy from 0 to 1. And that's equal to y to the third over 3. Nope, not even over 3. That's just y to the third. Fantastic. From 0 to 1. And that's equal to 1 minus 0 equal to 1. Check. This is indeed a density function. It is a marginal 
density function from the joint density function, two times x plus y with the sample space, zero to x, less than y, less than one. Okay, so there is the marginal density on y. Now I told you I was gonna give you two practice problems, but in fact, the way I've set this up, you actually have a bunch of practice problems. Okay, let me show you some practice problems before I give you some formal practice problems. Um, you could start right on this page. Find the marginal for x, and then ensure the marginal density function for x is a density function itself. Finding the marginal for x, g of x, would just be integrating the joint density function with respect to y. So that problem is not too bad. We could go back a page here, and you could find the marginal for y from the uniform distribution. Okay, so that is a similar sort of picture, except this time you'll sum up um, and project onto the y-axis. So you'll sum up across the values of x. What I encourage you to do, if this picture isn't cutting it for you, is really just start with this kind of piecewise function, recognizing that y really only takes on the two values, two and one, for whatever x might be doing. Y only takes on the two values, two and one, so you'll end up with a very similar sort of piecewise function for the marginal on Y. But I also thought of two specific practice problems you could focus on. Make up for yourself a not uniform distribution on 1, 2, cross 1, 2. And if you want a specific example of a not uniform distribution, by the way, these shouldn't be capitalized because this isn't a formal title. This is just something I'm giving this distribution name. I'm giving this distribution to help you all recognize that there's uniform and not uniform distributions um, on this sample space. So make up for yourself a not uniform distribution on this sample space. If you need a specific example to get you started, go back one video, and I define one there. But you don't have to use those same densities. Uh, the values 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0 0.1 that I chose. You could choose any other values so long as you indeed define a joint density function. Um, further, you could take the continuous joint density function that we looked at as a practice problem from the last video. I'll write it out again. You could take this one, and for either of these, find the marginals h of y and g of x, and then ensure, that is prove, that h and g are themselves density functions. So there is two formal practice problems for you and two uh, informal practice problems for you where you just complete the examples that I already started in this video itself. Hopefully this video gives us a better understanding of marginal density functions as found from joint density functions. They're going to come up again for us uh, just a few more times as the semester closes out. So it'll be good to have at least an intuitive understanding of these, even if you don't dive uh, full into the very deep waters of joint and marginal density functions. We just kind of need a vague uh, understanding and a few practice problems to get us through so that we can have a general understanding of the notation that's coming up.